Hello everyone. Mama Narwhal here. Well, here behind the scenes today. And as you can see, hello. As you can see, this is the Midland. She wanted to do a video. So, we're going to do one. And kind of like I did with Hubby, but she's going to talk about her experiences growing up and getting diagnosed with her group of things and talk about how it affected her life and how she's doing now and the things she's struggling with now etc etc things of that nature so whenever she's ready uh we can ask the first question okay or do you want to make a statement how do you want to do this kiddo I mean, I'm fine with just asking the first question. You're just fine with asking the first question. Okay. Well, the first question is, why isn't a nose 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. Oh, because then it would be a foot. you got to speak up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. got to pretend, you know, there's no headphone warning, so you got to <laughs> speak up. Oh, there's some giggling. Okay. For those of you that don't know, I tell jokes. A lot and then we laugh and then we tell more jokes so we got some silliness going on today and the clicking the little clicking noises squeaky the ancient is drinking water and she's playing with a binder clip so there may be some random noises as well maybe a little bit of background noise uh, you know but that's life in our house we don't edit we don't you know pretend to be something we're not what you see is what you get almost like it's called WYSIWYG yeah okay so what what do you remember struggling with the most as a kid um. like kindergarten age oh a lot um making friends talking to people um the school work i struggled with that a lot mm -hmm. um it's about all i remember okay there's probably other stuff i just don't remember well, did you, like, did something in there say this isn't right because you see other kids doing different things? Or did you think that... I mean, I thought it was just normal for me because I knew everyone was different at that time. So I thought it was just who I was. Um, I was still scared to, like, show it. Because I knew I'd get made fun of, which I did. Um, so, yeah. Well, when they made fun of you, how how did that make you feel? Um, kind of hurt. Because, like, um, I knew that it was okay to be different. Because of all the lessons I learned at church, you know, God made you different and special. It hurt that the other kids didn't see it that way, but growing up now, I know that not everyone goes to church and not everyone knows that because of their household. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you... Did you feel better when you were alone in a room full of people or did you feel better with people? Um, it, I felt better with, uh, people who understood me. Okay. Um, but yeah, if no one understood me, then yes, I would prefer to be alone, so. Okay. Okay. Do you feel understood now? Yes, a lot. Okay. Do you feel people outside, like, people that you meet on the street or people mm -hmm. that you meet at Walmart, do you feel that they understand, or... Um, 
I feel like if I get to know that person, then yes, they will understand. But if it's just like we walk by each other, I don't think they would understand because we don't Does talk. that bother you? Not really. Okay. Because I know that I don't know their life either, so they wouldn't just know mine. Right. Okay. That'd be creepy. Well, do you excuse the backdrop movement, Squeaky the Ancient decided to walk through it. Um, for whatever reason, because he's an ancient cat. Um, did you struggle? Wait, jumping backwards again. Oh. Did you struggle to make and keep friends? Or did you just finally one day just wake up and say, oh. I struggled to make friends. Keeping them was not a problem. Um. Yeah. The only friends that, like, that I couldn't keep, obviously, they moved away. And that's something I can't control. Right. Um, but yeah. I still, I still have all my friends. Uh, and I can keep them. It's just hard to make them. Right. Because I don't like talking to people. So walking up to them is how, scary. How did you make these friends, then? Um, I met them through other friends. Oh, okay. So, like, if you had friend um, A and right. you met friend B and C, but friend A moved away. Mm-hmm. Okay. And through my sister. Yes. That's how I got most of my Yes. Friends. The Biggin the did have a lot of friends that hung around after she had exited to move on with life. Pretty soon we'll be calling her Doc. Mm -hmm. Um. How... Uh, you can keep talking. I, I'm... Um, what... What's... Okay, what is it like when... Because you have ADHD, but it's inattentive. Right? Yes. And everybody knows ADD, ADHD... Mm -hmm. And the only thing that they really focus on is the HD because that's the most visible, right? The hyperactivity, yep. the constant movement, the Ping. stemming. Huh? Ping. Yeah, exactly. But you have something unique. And it's, I mean, it's not unique, but it's not right. really known. Um, you have ADHD and attentive. Yes. Can you describe that for us? Um, it's like my brain has the hyperness mm -hmm. it just like never shuts off um it it used to cause me sleep trouble because my brain would just not turn off um i mean i'm struggling sleeping now but it's also because <laughs> i'm just my brain never turns off so your body no. doesn't move no but your brain is just it's like a Across 300 lane yeah. highway and all the cars are trying to get into one tunnel yes and nothing's there, nothing, you know, and the tunnel's under construction. Right. Right? Um, Does that cause you problems with, say, focusing on tasks or a conversation or... Um, sometimes I can get my brain to focus on something, um, but I can't do, like, multiple things at once. Okay. My brain is just, like, focused on one task right. at a time more than two. Okay. So I can't, like, do dishes and clean the counters. Like, well, nobody can like simultaneously. Well, I'm saying like if I don't get if I don't focus on the dishes, they'll never get done. And if I don't focus on the counters, they will never get done. Okay. So, so what you're saying is you need to take that car or that thought yes. and drive it straight through from point A to point B before somebody says wipe down the counters, right? Yes. Okay, so that's where the struggle is. Mm -hmm. um, what? You want a snack? Under you go. And there goes the camera. It is snack time, apparently. Um, does that cause you problems in a lot of different areas, or... 
-hmm. Is it something that, like, you can control in certain situations? I can control it in certain situations. Um, but yeah, I feel like if I don't get something done, that, like, everyone's going to get mad at me. Are you serious? And, um, <laughs> um, that, um, you know, that I'm going to get in, like, in deep trouble, um, even though I know I'm not. It's right. So that's when your anxiety kicks in. Yes. Okay. It's when I start having panic attacks, thinking I have to be perfect, even though no one's really perfect. So I don't know why I, my mind would be trying to tell me to be perfect. Right. I, okay. I okay. So you kind of got like this whole really odd thing going on and then yes. something else pops up and it, when you're in a panic attack does all the cars bump into each other worse yes okay um it's like my brain won't stop thinking on that one thought so then you get kind of hyper focused yes. on that whole oh my gosh uh, that panic attack mm -hmm. the, that those cars and that thought process yes. okay is there something that you do that breaks that kind of cycle um i do try to color or like play a, like video games or something okay. to calm my uh mind um especially when i'm working on like lessons to help you guys out right or like when i was in school you know focusing on school um i would try to listen to music to kind of not break focus but kind of keep my mind on okay you can get through this just right. listen to the music Okay, like working to the beat. Yeah. You know, or working to the rhythm or something. Right. Okay. All right. Now, years and years and eons ago, and I can say that now because you're older, uh, you were also diagnosed with something called intellectual disability. Yes. Now, for those of you that don't know, eons and eons before her diagnosis, it was actually called something else. And... I'm not going to repeat it because it can be and is and for a lot of people a very offensive wording and I'm not going like I said I'm not going to repeat it but it's the same thing as that only under a different name okay now do you want to describe in your own words what intellectual disability is um, it's, I'm kind of a slow learner, um, it's, I would say it's like autism, but it's, it's not, but like, for me, I feel like it is though, because like, I feel like there's something there that the, the doctors are just like, eh, we'll just call it this. Okay. Um, so it's kind of hard to live with. But once you've lived with it your whole life, basically, you get kind of used to it. So you you figured out solutions to live life, but yet live life with this as a like adapting yes. certain tasks and certain thought processes. So yep. it's easier to for you to understand. Yep. Okay. Um, when you were in your brick and mortar, was it? easy for you to do the same things and tell the same jokes and talk the same way as your friends and other kids? Yes, it's easier to fake this, like fake being normal, than showing your uh, true self, at oh. least for me. Okay. Um, <coughs> joking. Um, but yeah, I know for some people it's harder to fake what you have, but I feel like for me it's just so easy to fake it because I've faked it while being in the brick and mortar. Um, so yeah. But how did faking it make you feel? Not good, because I knew that that's not how I was. Um, but I also wanted to try to fit in when I was there. Um, now I've always been a good child, so like, in school, basically. Um. If only you could see the face on the Mama Narwhal. Except for a few mishaps <clears throat> as children. 
Okay, that's normal. Um, but as good as I could be. Yeah. <laughs> but in school, I tried to be better than I could. Um, and I've always been a shy kid, so talking was never a problem. Um, but yeah, I did the best I could in school, and I still got bad grades. It still wasn't like the best, but I did what I could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you always, when you got those bad grades, were you always scared to approach somebody and say, I'm really struggling with this. Can you help me? Yes. I never liked talking to teachers. Um, so asking for help was very hard. Um, the only person I actually asked for help was one of my teachers, my math teacher. Yeah. But I don't remember his name because. So. Yeah. But you had to have that comfort, that. Right. You know, I thought could... process that, and that reduced anxiety in order yes. to approach that person and say, oh, <laughs> I'm really struggling with this. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you also kind of had this fear that if you messed up, what would happen? That everyone would just make fun of me. Um, for ma making a mistake, which back then I was very scared of that, but now I'm just like, I can make mistakes because every human makes mistakes. So, in a few short years, you've learned a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing, and I'm still trying to learn other things. Um... But some things just come later in life than what people think. Did you, did you ever thought that you would be able to do the things you're doing now? Way back when you were much younger. No. I didn't think I would come this far. Um, now my goal when I was younger was to graduate early, which I did. But I never thought I could actually do it. Because all the teachers told me that I couldn't graduate early because I had an IEP or like I wasn't smart enough and I did graduate early. Mm -hmm. My sister couldn't even graduate early. <laughs> See, you've accomplished something that no one else in this family did. Yeah. See? And it's through hard work. Yes, it was. So. Yep. So now that you know, mm -hmm. you can be different and you can be yourself and make mistakes, and still be successful, mm -hmm. where, what do you want to do? I'm still figuring that out. Okay. Because I want to start a YouTube channel, but now I'm like, I don't know if I want to, but I do. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do. Does it take you longer than most people to make decisions? Yes. Yeah. Especially a big one, like a job. Because mm -hmm. I already know I don't want to go to college because that's very expensive. And I just don't think I'd have the brains enough to do that. Look, see? Brain you're knocking, power. You're so knocking that. yourself. It's see? Just, I just don't want to go. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what? No judgment here. Right. No judgment here, kiddo. Um, you know? I did know when I was younger I wanted to be an EMT. Mm -hmm. And one of Charlotte... or. Biggin. Biggin. I knew that. Um, friends told me that I don't need to go to college. We have a thing here in town that I can go to at least drive the EMT. or Like the a ambulance. ride along type. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but I would have to get my license, which I am studying for. Okay. Um, so yeah, I may want to do that. But okay. I'm not sure. So it's going to take... Uh, right. A few to figure out what I actually want to do. Okay. Okay. Because I can always do YouTube and the MT. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. There's no it. written rule that says you have to pick one career and then right. stick with it and sit in that cubicle or sit, you know, do this thing and you you pick what you like. And if you like a few things, don't overextend yourself to the point you know you're right. you have issues or trouble or get mm -hmm. too stressed out, but. You don't have to pick just one thing, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, just that's just not the way life works. You can do what makes you happy, right. and if 
being an EMT makes you happy and a YouTube channel. You know, you're not a, uh, an EMT 24-7. Right. So, well, what, what do you want if a stranger was to watch this video and they didn't know anything about intellectual disability or anxiety or anything like that? Because you know what an invisible disability is, right? Something that you can't see. Right. And a lot of the things that we have in this family are invisible. Mm -hmm. You know? Only we know they're there. Only our bodies and our brains know that they're there. Right. And a lot of people don't understand things like that. Mm -hmm. So... If somebody were to watch this video and say, well, she looks okay. I don't see what she's talking about because she's talking and she's, right. you know, playing with a binder clip and, you know, they're being funny. But what would you want them to know if they knew about your invisible disabilities, but yet they were still kind of unsure um, don't really judge someone by how, what they're doing, um, because people can't see the disabilities, but if someone says, you know, I do have that, you should probably believe them, because they know what they have, or they know what they've been through, um, and some signs are clear that I have anxiety, like playing with a binder clip and spinning in the chair. Those are, like, major signs that I have anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I do talk. I just didn't like, I don't like to talk to strangers. And matter of fact, ladies, everybody, she approached me. Yes. After I started this and I interviewed hubby, she's one of my biggest viewers. Yes. Because she doesn't, she isn't always around when I make my videos. So she goes through and watches my videos and she... This kid right here, right here, see my, my fingers wiggling right next to her ear. She approached me and said, Mom, Mom, I want to share with the world. I want to share with everybody who I am. And at that moment, I thought I was going to burst at the scenes. I was like, oh, my word, my kid. This was a huge leap for her. Wanting to just go in front of the camera and talk about herself and try to tell people you know the things that she's done and seen and felt mm -hmm. all these years and I know I keep interrupting but you know old habits die hard <laughs> but this is a huge leap and I want the whole world to know how proud I am of this kid from where she was at birth to overcome everything she's been through and to do the things that she's done and to come this far. I'm just, I'm bamboozled is the new word for the day. Just flabbergasted, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, just amazed, you know, at things like that. And at the very least, we should get some claps somewhere in the chat or the comment section or share the video and say, man, look at this kid, you know, um, look at this smile. And she still has the same dimples she had when she was a kid. Don't let her fool you. Yeah, no, don't let her fool you. But, you know, just amazing. Okay, back to the, the thingy, the, the question and answer period. Okay, even the cat is, even Squeaky the Ancient is like sneaking under the table. It's really funny. Um... You were there for almost all of the appointments when we sat in the room with whomever and they said, okay, based on this testing, this is what's wrong with Cheyenne. And I know that for the most part, you were off in the corner. You didn't really like, you pretended you weren't paying attention, I was, but I know you heard. I was definitely paying attention. Okay. Yeah. See, see. I eavesdropped a lot when I was little. I know you did. That was like your thing. But you got away with it too. No, nah, you know you didn't. Um, but when you heard those words, and I know you didn't understand them at certain age levels, 
but when you heard those and they said this is because the way they always phrase it in those appointments is this is what's wrong right. and when they said this is what's wrong and then said the name of it mm. how did you feel I felt really um, it made me feel kind of bad knowing that like they think something's wrong because there's nothing wrong with people it's how they are as a person so I don't like it when doctors say that because I feel like it's gonna hurt someone's feelings okay so having a disease or an issue or uh, any kind of disability or anything right. like that it's not in your words not wrong it's just who the person is yes when you because you've been through a lot of therapies ot and speech and and things like that and you did so well that eventually you just phased out of the program right yes did has everybody used that kind of language with you over the different things that you've done? No. Just like the doctors, when they're diagnosing me, uh, use that phrase. Um, but the therapist I've had, they've all understood me. They've never really d like made fun of me or anything. I mean, I know it's their job not to, but there's the one person, you know, you get that messes up with their job. Um, but yeah, the therapists I've had were really nice, uh, really supporting. Do um, you think you're wrong? No. Do you think that you being you is a bad thing? No. Honestly, I feel like it's a good thing. So people understand me for who I am. Okay. Do you, do you like to advocate for yourself? Yes and no. Depends on the thing I'm advocating for. If it's talking to like the doctors and stuff, then I can do that because I've been to enough doctors that I'm just like, here's here's what I here's my symptoms, you know. Do whatever you need to do. Um, same with therapist. Anything in the doctor or medical community, I'm fine with talking to. Um, because the Lord knows I've been to plenty of them. <laughs> So you're, you're, do you, when they do something, when people do do something that you don't like, do you struggle to stand up and say, respectfully, of course, hey, wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> do you I struggle with that or are you okay with that? I struggle with that because I don't like telling people that they're wrong. Um, especially since like it hurt me when people told me I was wrong or I did something wrong. I don't like hurting other people's feelings. Okay. Um, but yeah, sometimes I won't stand up. But then if someone else is in the room, I'm like, okay, let's try this. And I, I do try, but then I just can't get the words out. And I start panicking because yeah. I don't want to hurt their feelings. See if they're doctors. Or well, not just higher doctors, ups, but, or, or higher ups, but, you know, other yeah. people, you know. I just don't like hurting other people's feelings. And that's like the hardest thing. That I have to <laughs> deal with right now. Because mm -hmm. advocating, you do have to hurt some, like, you don't have to hurt their feelings, but, like, right. you got to stand up. Being respectively assertive right. is a big problem. And that can hurt people's feelings, and I don't like that. So it's, like, something I just have to deal, like, not deal with, but, like, try to get over it. Yeah. And realize that you're not hurting their feelings, but you're helping them, realizing that they're not right or you know they are right or helping them to understand yes yeah. that is the words i was trying to say yeah. so and you because you do struggle with words yes. because you also have something um that it it's known again but not well known but it's called mixed expressive receptive language disorder yes and that is something i didn't really explain to you um, but I did work with you with it. Mm -hmm. 
receptive and expressive language is things like tone of voice, body language, you know, eye movement, um, you know, things of that nature. And Excuse me. both issues, it can be receptive language disorder and expressive language disorder. But sometimes they both of those can be mixed, can be put together. And when a person has this issue, they struggle to understand conversations as a whole. They struggle to understand the tone of voice, the body language, uh, the words that are being spoken. Um, and it's not that they have a hearing problem. It's not that they have a, a, a vision problem. It's that their brains kind of take everything and say, well, I don't understand why that person is smiling because those words in a different or that specific order shouldn't make them smile, even though it's a joke. They're, the brain doesn't process it as a joke. So getting nonverbal social cues and, to, you know, things like that, that's one of the things you struggle with. And for a very long time, we have tried to work with that, but we just keep, we go up a little bit, hit a plateau, go up a little bit, hit a plateau, right. and then it just bottoms out, and then we got to climb that mountain again. And I know that's a, one of the things you can mask, isn't it? No, actually, I can't. You can't? No. Okay. Um, for the longest time, I had no expression on my face. Um, I mean, I can, like, fake a smile, you know, um... But other than that, like, I can't fake anything else. Okay. Um, when I was, whenever, like, uh, when Grandma passed away, mm -hmm. I, people said that I was, like, fake crying to get attention at, at school. Mm. Um, but it really hurt, and I knew that feeling because, like, getting bullied, you know, you got hurt a lot. So that feeling I never really masked. I just didn't like doing it for people. Right. So you weren't really crying for attention. You no. were crying because you were genuinely hurt and you missed your grandmother. Yes. And I right. still do. And obviously. Um, so even then, it wasn't understood. And you, did you understand what, what they were saying? No. Because I knew that someone had passed away. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. And when they were just like, you're doing it for attention, I had to literally stop and think, be like, wait, am I doing this for attention? I don't think I am. So I had to like stop and think and be like, no, you're not doing this for attention. You're genuinely hurt. But just don't listen to what they say and just get past this. Right. So you had so. to process not only your feelings about your grandmother dying, but you had to process right. what they were saying because what they were saying didn't match your feelings no. and now their tone of voice and their facial expressions none of that matched what they were saying yeah no. so there was a lot of discombobulation throughout that entire process yes. yeah and that's part of that language disorder um and a lot of people confuse when you see the word language disorder they oh well that person can't talk or mm -hmm. they can only do this or they don't you know it, it's not necessarily again Right. a visible thing or something that someone can hear mm -hmm. with that language it's in there it's yeah. in the head and it's you can't see it mm -hmm. but i feel like i've come a long way mm -hmm. from where i began with the language disorder yes yes you have because yeah. as you can see many many times on this video alone she smiles yes and even though that's about the extent of what she has compared to even five years ago, right. this is this is a big, you know. I used to never have a smile or anything. I just sit there. Yeah, you were kind of like a gray rock lump thing, and you, yeah. no matter what, we would tell a joke, and you you just monotone. Mm -hmm. That is funny, or yeah, ha ha. You know, there would be nothing there, and now you it takes you a few minutes, but you at least process it, and then All you right. chuckle. Right. You know, or you have a body language movement where you, mm -hmm. oh, that's funny. You know. Or I at least, uh, I'm not monotone as much as I can. 
Yeah. So but there's Sam. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's still some times where you where there should be like a little bit of a tone or a little bit of a lift right. and then it's just simply flat. And I'm like, okay. I mean I can look at you and understand. Right. You know, uh, hubby can look at you and understand. Pang, big and you know, several other people that we know can right. look at you and understand. Oh, she's monotone, but this is what's really going on, and she's in there. Yeah. We just have to un get understand that particular monotone. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you think that is a problem making friends and interacting with people socially? Um. Yes, because I don't know what, like, I don't understand their body's language and stuff. Um, at least back then. Now I'm learning how to, like, not, not deal with it, but, like, overcome? That's the word. Mm -hmm. Um, overcome that. So now I know, like, different postures mean different things. Okay. Um, but it took me a while to get there. Yeah. And I'm still getting there, so. <laughs> yeah. Because every individual is different. There's right. a, you know, so for some people, a ha-ha laugh could mean they're being seriously laughing or being sarcastic laughing. Right. It's a, you know, it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, sorry. Um, when we first started this video, I... So I asked Hubby and Pang that to not like cross between the camera, <laughs> the middle and, and the backdrop. Well, I'm sitting, we're sitting at the, at a school, our school table. And I said, I'm not sure how you could do this. And Pang took it upon himself to crawl under the table. Well, now Hubby is following suit. So when they need to walk to the other part of the house, they are crawling under the table. And it kind of makes us chuckle because... <laughs> I, like I said, we don't edit anything and we live our life and we're not perfect. We are not like absolutely, you know, we're not going to edit anything when things happen unless it's cussing or it goes against YouTube standards or you're listening to YouTube. Um, this is life. This is what we do. We laugh at funny. We, we, it's, it's crazy. It's fun. It's, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, this is who we are. And as you saw, she laughed. There was another laugh. Ha ha ha. And now Stop. hubby is coming back. I heard the knees popping. <laughs> Stop crackling pop. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a minute though, folks. He'll get back under the table. Um, Actually, here comes Pink. No. I only know that because he runs down the stairs. And here he comes. Huh? Huh? Done? No, not yet. The camera is actually still recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you, why don't, you can't get on camera, but why don't you say hi to everyone? Hi. How are you? Good. Good? Did you have a good day today? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah, I've never been on GoPro before. You've never been on a camera before? Well. Yes, you have. No. When? So all the times I took your picture. Except this but, type of camera. Uh, this is a GoPro. No, it's not a GoPro. <laughs> it's just a regular little camcorder thing. I thought it was a GoPro. No, it's not a GoPro. Uh, yeah, snappers. snap the fingers. Well, I can see that this video has taken a turn. <laughs> yes, it has. A drastic turn the other way but like i said this is what happens we try to work on projects and then bam yeah. everybody wants to get involved and we just make it a family affair yep <sighs> and dad just decided now hubby decided now to crawl under the table <laughs> the hope daddy <laughs> <laughs> and now ping is trying to assist him under the table so i will be gently grabbing the tripod uh, uh, we don't do bully words. Thank you. That was a pain in the butt to do. We did okay.
as hubby slowly shuts the creaky door. <laughs> so evil. And give the herd of elephants a moment to run up the stairs. And we're back. Okay. I don't know if I should call classify that as an advertisement or breaking news. I'm, I'm not sure how to run with that one. I don't know. I don't either. Okay. I don't even remember where we were in our conversation. Do you? Something about language disorder and how far it came. Yes. Come. Yes. But that's as far as it went. That is as far as you're yeah. I actually have a question. Oh. It doesn't have anything to do with the language disorder. Okay. When you knew the struggles we had with your brother paying yes. when he was little and we couldn't figure out what they were and we finally figured out what they were and it was a total, total shock. Now, I know that we have kept this from certain family members for certain reasons. Yes. But I think it's time we bring it to the light. What do you think? Yeah. How did you feel? Like digging deep down about the feel your feelings about this that you could mm -hmm. process. How did it feel to be diagnosed as a mild hemophiliac? Um, it was weird. But once I like understood what uh, hemophilia was. I realized that it answered a lot of my questions. Why do I get random bruising? Um, why, I don't know, uh, why like certain joints hurt? Um, because I know when I was little, like I would get random bruises and I wouldn't understand what I did. Nobody understood. Right. Um, so getting, diagnosed with a bleeding disorder like hemophilia it was kind of a blessing because I knew what I had and I could answer the um question in my head like oh you got a bruise it's because you have a bleeding disorder or your one of your joints hurts oh I know and I understand why it hurts now instead of when I was younger yeah so yeah yeah um Does that, on top of everything else, do you feel that that complicates your life, or...? Yes, because I keep forgetting to do profi, which I know I need to remember. But with everything else, it, like, I don't know, it's like, I, sometimes I do remember to do it, but then I get busy and I forget, because it's just in the shuffle. Because I'm trying to complete that project plus a different project. And then I just get so, like, into something that I just forget. Um, and I'm trying to work on that. But it's really hard when I'm, like, trying to do something else. You just mentioned I forget. Yes. And this is something that no matter who we have gone to and who we have talked to and who we have explained this to, right. they can't really pinpoint one thing or another thing or an independent thing. What's your memory like? So for some things, it's great, right? Like remembering how to clean or do, I don't know, um, coloring or whatever, like I've learned then, like, it's okay. Um, but then, it, like, for other things, it's great. Um, I don't know if, what, what it's great for, because I can't remember right now. Um, but for things that, like, are, like, I do, but I didn't do as a kid, I, I struggle remembering, like, profi. Because I didn't do it when I was little, because we didn't know about it. But then when we started it, I struggled to remember it, because I just, it wasn't, couldn't get a routine where I couldn't remember the routine um, so it, I just take a day at a time with my memory um, but 
like today I actually remember what I am going to do for the rest of the week. Okay. Which is only Tuesday, which Right. But sometimes you by tomorrow though you may forget. Right. So if you like you said, if you've done it as a routine since you were a kid right. and memorized the routine or memorized the steps of say doing the dishes or right. <clears throat> how long does it take you to remember or memorize the steps? Um, it takes some time. Because um, with dishes, it took me about five, four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, I do struggle with them now. Um, but sometimes I can get them perfectly and other times I'm like, I don't understand how I can't get this one dish clean. Um, but then I know I have other dishes to do, so I can't spend two hours on this one thing. Do distractions hurt your memory, or do um, they, like if you said you're struggling with a dish, but something somebody says something to you? Yes, I do. It does uh, hurt it. Um, but my sister, because uh, I used to struggle with uh, putting on music, um, but my sister showed me that I can put on like a playlist of whatever band I want that night and just go through it um, and put on a playlist with all the songs I like or know so I can just focus and it helped. Um, I still do it sometimes, but not all the time. Right. Right. And other distractions as well. Somebody right. saying something or a noise mm -hmm. or everybody in a different room laughing that you would, I notice sometimes when you're doing chores and Ping's doing chores and I read something funny and I start laughing, you stop what you're doing and come in and you're like, yes. oh, what's so funny? And I'm like, you're distracted. And you're like, oh man. Yes. And then you, then you pause for a minute. Like you're trying to remember what you were doing because it was a fleeting moment. It was a, mm -hmm. oh. You know, well, when I hear people laugh, sometimes I feel like they're laughing at me. Right, right. So that's why my instinct is to be like, "Hey, what what did I do that was funny? I don't understand. Right. I was just washing I'm, a dish." I'm just using that as an example. Right. You know, or there could be something you hear on the television. It could be mm -hmm. something you hear in a video that we're watching or whatever. But yes. yeah, yeah. No, I I understand that. It's just it's that ADHD. Yes. Do you think since we don't know, I mean, there's memory memory issues is one of the symptoms of several things right that you have been diagnosed with but at the same time it's something that is a big problem and mm -hmm. it's not we can't really ha get anybody to help us address it mm -hmm. do you think that 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 you can work with that and adapt to it or do you think that you we, you would really want to advocate to someone and say, um, I really need help with this. So I've tried and we've both tried to get someone to under, like help us understand why I have memory issues, but it seems like no one's listening. So I'm, I'm kind of not wanting to try that just because we've tried it for so long and no one's listening and it's hard. So at this point, then you would rather just adapt, uh, yeah. figure out a strategy that works for you. And when we were, when you were little, um, yes. I can't use the exact phrase we used, but mm -hmm. um, it basically was a kiddish term for rote memorization. Yep. And there's your new term to Google folks, rote memorization. Um, and that's basically what I used with you for hours and hours every day to teach yes. you how to pick up a piece of macaroni with a fork, how you, how I got your mu muscles to memorize that motion and your blocks and the picking up and the constant speech and the yep. clarification and the enunciation and the, you know, mm -hmm. it was basically just rote memorization to train your brain right. to perform those tasks. So your subconscious could just do them yep. sort of breathing. And that's what you're saying at this point. We are going to be doing, we are about, <laughs> well, nope, there it goes. We have a second cat named Junior, and he was attempting to jump on the lap, 
but he changed his mind and has now completed his acrobatics into the other office spinny chair and proceeding to give himself a bathe. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> See, we're all easily distracted because, well, you know, sometimes you just need to be distracted. Right. And, but I agree. So, uh, with that being said, any final words? So, I uh, write things down to help me remember, but then I forget to write some stuff down, like, profi, but I do, like, write down, oh, this is what I'm going to do today. Okay. And I write it down, and that does help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any, those are great. Love it. But any final words that you want to impart to the populace of the world about you, the Midlin? Um, just don't judge someone because they're different. Treat them like you want to be treated. So, yeah. That's it? Yep. All right. Well, this is the Midlin. And Hi. the rest of the members of the band, as they crawled under the table and as they were bipping, bopping around the room and the mama narwhal. And I hopefully will be able to make more videos soon. Uh, they come as I can get them. Um, I will. I have discovered YouTube shorts. So, you know, but check out the rest of the channel. Um, there's, there's not much there right now, but there will be, you know. Um, share, subscribe, like, comment, uh, you know, thumbs me up, thumbs me down, whatever it is you feel like you need to do, uh, watch about 10 seconds of the video and go, meh, and move on. Uh, yeah, however you want to do it, that's fine with us. Say goodbye, Midland. Bye.